Okay, hello and welcome to this episode with Chris Redmond. Today we're going to be talking about mental health, particularly in runners. So Chris, if we were on a gym floor with you for 60 seconds, tell us who you are and what you do. Um, well, I'm Chris Redmond from Chris Redmond Runner Strength and Endurance Coaching and from Run Head First. Um, I'm predominantly a father of one, a fiancé, a Trammy Rovers fan, a runner, a strength and conditioning coach and a director of a, a mental health charity. <laughs> so Trammy Rovers fan for your sins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it wasn't uh, predictable for the last few years, it definitely is now. <laughs> so... Um, in terms of as therapists, um, we need to know about mental health in the patients that we treat. And that's a big part of what you do, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, in terms of the provision for keeping people fit for their sports, or as I say, running, we see a lot of it through runners who use their sport to utilise that to improve their mental health or treat their mental health. And a lot of the background behind what I do with, with them is is mostly keeping them able to run. Obviously, a lot of them do want to see the performance improvements and they do want to see the, the benefits of not being injured and whatnot, purely to the fact that they can race. But ultimately, they are using it as a tool to, to aid their, their well-being. And a lot of what we do in that respect is focused on keeping them being able to run. I think of, often with athletes, we... We consider the, this kind of physical um, nature of doing sport, but then also we've got to consider the, the mental nature of doing sport as well. So when you're working with people on the gym floor, do you take that into consideration? Um, if, yes and no. I mean, ultimately, we, we don't structure a session around their mental health. Is that, is that how you mean? Just in terms of... Um, in terms of just taking it into consideration, so how you motivate someone, how you maybe set someone's goals, obviously to take into into account their mental health and the mental considerations around trying to get to their performance goals ultimately. Um, definitely, I mean, that that's all got to come from them, hasn't it? The, the, the level that we're mostly operating on, from my personal point of view, is with, is with Joe Public. It's, it's with kind of busy professionals. There are a few people who are performing on that top end where performance is really really important to them but ultimately that comes from them it comes from their own motivations and it's up to them to decide what they want to do really and I'd, I'd never put anything in one of my runners heads to what they should be doing or where their performance should be at I'd, I'd always let that come from them good stuff and not only are you a strength and conditioning coach but you also set up a charity running head first and recently you raised over £5,000. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, well, obviously we, we're in the heart of the COVID-19 pandemic as we speak. So that initial, the charity came about because I had the nervous breakdown in 2015 and throughout that time I used um, running to aid my mental health. I was running before that anyway for about a year and a half. I entered a few kind of big races I owned a different business at the time and I was I was kind of burning the candle at both ends ran myself into the ground no pun intended uh, had a nervous breakdown which was pretty catastrophic so from there I just kind of used run to supplement my mental health massively and as time went on I realized how much of a benefit I had been and I do put that recovery where I'm at now down massively to physical activity so we we kind of tried to find a charity who, who offered physical activity or running or any, any shape of exercise to way people's mental health. Not, I couldn't find one. I wanted to support them. I couldn't find one. And then after a few different conversations with family and girlfriend and whatnot, I just thought I was set one up myself. So we set one up and then that was early 2019. We finally got the ball rolling on that and we got our official status as CIC in August and then our funding come in early January. So we started to go through the whole process of setting up uh, the actual interventions then. Once the interventions were about to set up, the whole COVID-19 pandemic started and everything got shut down immediately. So our, our natural response was to think, how can we now help people as we intended to do, but 
we, you know, Collins, because we were just sat there idle. So we set up uh, what's called the five and eight chess campaign, where we did get slightly overshadowed by another 5K campaign that raised about 10 million pounds. <laughs> but we set up the five and eight chess campaign, which ultimately aimed to raise money for the physical and mental well-being of the NHS staff at the Wirral um, University Teaching Hospital and their associated trust. So we raised, in the end, we raised six thousand pounds or just under, and that is going directly into helping the staff who've essentially treated our loved ones, etc., to recover from COVID because the, the physical and mental stress that they're going to be going through now is absolutely phenomenal, and we thought we'd give them something back for helping us, really. Fantastic, and obviously you did a few events yourself, and I think another director jumped in and yeah. so just want to tell us what you were doing. I, I, mine was quite tame compared to his. Um, I did a 50k on the treadmill, so that took about, uh, what did that take you now? Five hours and 15 minutes or something like that. I can't quite remember now. A few cans of Coke and a, a few energy gels and a, a, a bit of flapjack got me through that one and then a, a cider at midday. So I did that and then um, one of our the other directors, Ash Cox, uh, he climbed Mount Everest on a, on a biometrics box in his living room. I think the biometrics box is a, a, a pile of wood chickens in his garden now. But yeah, it, it took him 24 hours, and he got a bit, um, got a bit of a history in the, in the marine and then sorry in the military. So his knees and his hips are shot anyway. So he ended up doing the majority of it on one leg, which is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, fantastic, and obviously for worthy causes as well. So in terms of the mental health charity that you've set up, what are your plans going forward with that? What th provisions are you putting in place for people who want to come and do some e exercise or running to aid their mental health? So we're going to, we're actually adapting at the moment. So obviously with the current climate, we can't deliver any physical sessions. We had the, we had the chat earlier and it's clear things aren't, aren't getting anywhere soon so we've taken a lot of our services online now and we've just got affiliation with england athletic so we'll be doing a little bit through that as well uh, that's the running club sorry and we are starting some nutritional interventions with physical activity interventions hopefully walking up to link with some link up with some counselors too so we can, can provide that full holistic package of counseling the physical activity side of things and the nutritional intervention side of things and we'll start delivering online services. We're um, in the process out out of that once we're out of lockdown to set up some running clubs from the, a gym that uh, I'm currently working in, LP Strength Academy. The, the guy who owns that gym is one of my, the third director of the organisation, the charity. So we're setting up running clubs there, and then we'll have partnerships with other mental health organisations and counselling services. And ultimately, we're looking to get our own facility so we can we can go in full time, provide around the clock mental health services, with counselling services, therapy services, other holistic therapies, mindfulness, etc. So we're we'll, we'll actually looking at premises for that um, early next week, probably. Great stuff. And then obviously you, you mentioned how um, people can get in contact with you. So you just want to tell us more about the, your contact details, how people can find out more about you and about your charity. Yeah, sure. Um, for the charity, it's www.runningheadfirst.org. And for me personally, it's chrisredmondcoaching.co.uk. But you'll find all the charity stuff focused on the runningheadfirst.org website. Great. And we'll stick, obviously, all the, the links to that uh, on the show notes as well. So people can find those if they're part of the sports therapy community. Uh, just a uh, last question for you, Chris, really, is what are your three takeaway messages for sports therapists who might be working with people like yourself or with people who may have mental health uh, concerns? Um, if, if it's sport and capacity and, and the person's utilising that sport to aid their mental health, then there's a couple of things to consider, really. The, if you're treating an treating a injury-specific injury, then the person's potentially not going to be telling you the truth about the injury because A, they don't want to stop the sport or B, they want to get back to the sport as soon as possible. So if you've got someone on the bed and they're, they're not, you know, you, you think the injury is more than what they're telling you it is, which I know is always hard to tell. 
or you don't think they're ready to go back, then it is a consideration that they, they do want to get back faster than anything else. More so than anything, like nearly every sports therapist will know, people lose their identity when they're injured. And as soon as you lose your identity as a sportsman when you're injured, like, it's, it's a slippery slope. And you, people fall out of love with the sport quite quickly, particularly in the long term injuries. Um, hmm. The, I think one key thing to remember is or consider is involving the, the patient in with the team sports as much as possible too. You hear a lot, I mean, I listen to a lot of podcast sportsmen and whatnot, and the common theme about long-term injuries is that they felt didn't feel as part of the squad anymore. So if you can incorporate their rehabilitation into that team training as much as possible and just it helps them retain that identity and it helps them it obviously will not help the recovery speed up, but it'll certainly make them feel better about the recovery. And finally, I'd probably say that the patient's potentially going to lie to you about what they are doing. As I know, when I've done rehabilitative stuff with runners and I've asked them if they're running, they've insisted they're not running. They're running. I, I, they're just running, right? Because it's what they do. It's all they know. It's, they absolutely love the sport and so it's just another consideration and trying to stop that's going to be pretty much impossible so probably just incorporate that into the rehabilitation process more than anything else yeah i think you've sort of reached out on some really important points there and um, just in terms of trying to incorporate that athlete back into their sporting environment and ensuring that they do feel part of the team and you are aware of their mental health status um, I think that that's always important as a therapist, especially as often people open up to us uh, when, they're, when they're sitting on the plinth uh, and they might tell us a little bit more uh, about something that's going on in their life, which may not necessarily be in and around the injury itself, but it might be associated with it. So uh, there's some important things to consider. Thank you, Chris. That's been really insightful. Uh, I think it's important that we continue to develop our knowledge and skills around mental health. And therefore, I think what you're doing with your charity is great and hopefully it'll help more people in the future. Thank you. Well, hopefully.